I was working at a company called Twisted Pictures. I was president of production. I had spoken with a friend of mine who told me that um, there was a chance that the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre may have reverted from Platinum Dunes back to the original rights holders. So um, made a few phone calls and found myself on a jet within a week. I went down to Austin, Texas, and I met with Bob Kuhn and uh, Kim Hankel, who was the original writer of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They were the rights holders. and I. Um, made them an offer they couldn't refuse. No, that sounds too Italian. But seriously, we, um, we, uh, uh, I basically told them that if they would see fit to trust me with their rights, that I would do my best to reboot the franchise in the hopes of making six sequels similar to the Saw franchise. Lionsgate had hired Steven Susco, who they love and we love, but they decided after he delivered his script that they really wanted to go in a different direction. Sadly, Lionsgate shot it down because it had a lot of cannibalism, and I think that they were worried about cannibalism uh, because of a movie they did called Midnight, Midnight Meat Train. So it was back to the drawing board. So they interviewed like 17 pairs or 17 individual or pairs of writers, and we were lucky enough to go in with Mark Berg from Evolution and Carl Mazzacone, and we pitched uh, our idea. We really wanted to tell the Hatfield and McCoy story of this region of Texas um, and just thought, you know, that's there's so much more life in that for sequels. You know, Leatherface was going to be um, an anti-hero by the end of the picture. That was the idea because the Hartmans were so horrible and what they did to this family is so inconceivably terrible. Um, look, this is a group of people that are murderers. Absolutely. The Sawyers are bad folks. But you know what? We live in America, and we live in a country where you're supposed to get due process, and you're supposed to get your day in court, not a lynch mob. And we were saying, you know what? These things happen. This stuff happens in our culture, where citizens take it upon themselves to just string them up and burn them down. And so for us, we were kind of saying, the mob is worse than what Leatherface has done. We really wanted to um, humanize Leatherface. I think that was probably one of the big things. And to tie it to the original. At that point, we had gotten the project, you know, past the 50 yard line, um, and then spent a good three months honing that screenplay, polishing it, and bringing it to reality. They were actually very concise about what they were looking for, you know, which direction they wanted to go, and then we would give them drafts and we would get notes from them and it was a wonderful working condition. And action! Action, action! I've uh, never did anything with horror in my life. Carl Mazzacone said, hey, what do you think of my movie project? I gave him some thoughts. He liked them. The next thing I know, they hired a writer to implement them. And then I ultimately I ended up writing the script and they said, well, then why don't you just go ahead and direct it? So here I stand. I did a lot of research on different horror movies. I thought I'd bring my own kind of uh, thoughts to one and not sort of play monkey see, monkey do with uh, what people have done in the past. I think it's really a fine line between an homage and plagiarism, personally. So in this movie, we constantly debated to what point we could swing in either direction. When you approach uh, Texas Chainsaw, you have to go, okay, what made the first one fun? And to me, it was finding those little moments, those little embellishments that Tobe Hooper had put in the film. There's a lot of poetry in the original movie, just the compositions with the sunlights, the moons. Uh, the movie shot mostly wide with a lot, not so full of close-ups. Uh, so I was impressed by it. And then uh, I went through this, the movie again. I picked out like the 10 little things that 
I thought were really fun about it or cool, from the armadillo to the freezer to some of the language that opens the movie, uh, and I began to sprinkle it into the script in, in a new way. So we weren't sort of remaking it, but we could have fun using what was there before us. I think the elements of the film that represent the script that Deborah and I wrote the best are the Frankensteinian nature of the story, the fact that Leatherface becomes this empathetic character. Heather, the Hartmans, these are things that we created from, from whole cloth that we really um, feel protective of. We love those characters. We tried to give the town a certain flavor and and sense, and that's that's really there. Um, and a ton of the set pieces, even though a lot of the set pieces had to be shortened or reduced for budgetary constraints, which is you know which is every movie. We wrote a much bigger budgeted film than what actually got made, and I think that's where a lot of the changes came because we put in a lot more 3D, a lot more scares. I mean the uh, the carnival scene was huge. This is what's so cool about working with Lionsgate and with Evolution. The first thing in the carnival was uh, the pig head from Saw appearing. And in our version of it, Leatherface actually cuts him right down the middle, just saws him right in half. Again, budgetary concerns, I totally understand why they didn't do it. But what was so great was that Lionsgate and, and Evolution were like, yeah, like they loved you know, one franchise ripping the crap out of the other franchise. You know, it's interesting when people make sequels or prequels or remakes, um, sometimes they shoot frame for frame. And it's, I think, uh, other times, you know, you look at the Marcus and the Spell remake that Platinum Dunes did with Jessica Biel, it was very similar. There was a few small changes, but for the most part, the same movie. If you want filmmakers to keep finding new ways to turn our genre into gold, new ways, new stories, new ideas, you have to give us the freedom to tell those stories. You have to give us the freedom and take the internet shackles off of filmmakers and celebrate them, even if they swing and they miss. But if they swing for the fences, honor the fact that the filmmaker is trying to do that because otherwise, no one will swing for the fences and the audience will get what they're asking for, which is the same movie over and over and over. I can't think of a, of a world more boring than that. I think that anyone who attempts to make a sequel, I, I, I give you props because we know how hard it was. And I think some of them really did well and some of them missed the mark, but all in all, I think they really tried to make a scary movie. And that's really what we're all here doing this for. We're trying to put people on the roller coaster and have them take that ride. You don't, you don't go to a roller coaster and say, yeah, I just look, I just want one turn, but I don't, you know, that, that big hill, let's cut that out of it. Who would go to that roller coaster? <laughs> The number of times we've been told like, well, don't make it too scary, or oh, the audience gonna be upset by that. No, embrace that. Like, let's scare the crap out of people. That's what they came for. I think there was a lot of gold mine left in the gold mine, and I wanna, I wanna mine some of it. I think there's a really good story there and uh, great characters that can re reoccur over and over. And, I hope to give birth to a new franchise, and that's what our goal is here.